Hello everyone, my name is Kate and I'm the Go Kids Director here at Monterey Church. I am so excited that you've joined us today. In just a moment, we are gonna jump into worship and learn about God's Word together. But first, for all of you parents, if you'd like to dive deeper into today's lesson, check out our families page on our website for more activities to do with your family throughout the week. Now finally, we'd love for you to join us on a Sunday morning. We meet here at our 401 Alvarado Street location on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We hope to see you soon. But now it's time for us to worship, so let's go. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the story of someone who was introduced to a pretty unusual menu. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith, which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Sometimes that means making a move. What's this for? What's happening? Oh, please tell me there's a plan. Have a little faith, mon ami. Please be my guest. Oh, well, thank you. Welcome to the Taste Tour International. The what? The Taste Tour International. Say that. The International. The International Taste Tour. It just sounds better the other way. Oh. It also sounds like fun. 
We should travel the globe with our taste buds. Where to first? Ethiopia. Oh, I'm ready. Voila. Uh, what am I looking at? This is Monsieur Watt, served with injera. That's great, but what is it? Oh, this is a spicy red lentil stew and a kind of sourdough flatbread. You know, the server doesn't usually steal food off the diner's plate. Try some. May I have a fork? Well, the bread is the eating utensil. Less dishes to wash that way. Oh, wow. So much flavor. This is really good. I'm a Seganalo. Of what? Oh, that just means thank you in Amharic. That's what they speak in Ethiopia. I need more. What's up next? Turkey. That's not a very adventurous food. Not the bird. Oh, the country. Voila. Wait, I know what this is. Um, uh, bala, uh, uh, baka. Baklava, layers of phyllo pastry stuffed full of nuts and dripping with honey. Mmm. Light, crunchy, sweet, maybe too sweet? Ah, uh, no such thing. Here, don't forget the Turkish coffee. Wow, I think I'm going to be awake for a week. Hey, I've got one for you. Oh, well, where in the world are we? My friend brought this back from Australia. Oh, good eye, mate. It's called Vegemite. Huh. Looks kind of like Nutella. Yeah, you know, you might want to start with a small smear oh. on a cracker with oh. butter. Oh, water, water. Here, here. Uh, uh, oh, that was the saltiest thing I have ever eaten. It's kind of an acquired taste. Kind, it's kind of like a punch on the taste buds. Speaking of interesting taste, it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly with the help of God's Spirit. When the believers faced trouble in Jerusalem, they scattered to other places, taking the news of Jesus to Jewish people everywhere they went. Many sick people were healed, and God's Spirit even helped Peter to raise a dead woman back to life. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, I'm Brian. So. Peter and the other believers were doing incredible things through God's Spirit. They took the news of Jesus to towns and cities further and further from Jerusalem, like Joppa by the sea, where Peter stayed for a time with a leather worker named Simon. Now, so far, the believers had only shared Jesus with other Jewish people. After all, going inside the home of a Gentile or non-Jewish person was against a rule Jewish religious leaders had made. But God was already at work in the heart of a non-Jewish man living north along the coast in Caesarea. This man's name was Cornelius, and he was a Roman centurion. Cornelius gave generously to help people in need, and every day he prayed to God. One afternoon as he prayed, God said an angel, Cornelius, what is it, Lord? Your prayers and gifts to poor people are like an offering to God. So he has remembered you now send men to Joppa. 
have them bring back a man named Peter. He is staying with Simon, a man who works with leather. His house is by the sea. When Luke recorded this story, he wrote that Cornelius was afraid. This was no cute Cupid for a Valentine card angel. Nope, this angel who spoke to Cornelius was huge and glorious and overwhelming. And as soon as the angel left, Cornelius did exactly as the angel said, sending two servants and a God-believing soldier to Joppa to find Peter. While these men were making the trip down to Joppa, Peter was up on the rooftop overlooking the sea. He was hungry, and as he waited for the meal to be prepared, he spent his time praying. Lord, what do you have for me today? As Peter prayed, God gave him a vision. Peter seemed to see a sheet being lowered down from heaven. And inside it, inside the sheet were dozens of animals that Jewish law said were unclean. As Peter watched in amazement, God spoke to him. Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Now, Jewish people weren't allowed to touch these animals, much less cook them up for dinner. Surely not, Lord. I I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. Do not call anything that God has made unclean. As usual, Peter had responded with the first thing to enter his head. But God repeated these instructions twice more. Then, the sheet was taken back up into heaven. While Peter was still trying to wrap his mind around what had just happened, the three messengers from Cornelius arrived. God's spirits spoke to Peter. Three men are looking for you. Get up and go downstairs. Don't let anything keep you from going with them. I have sent them. The men explained about Cornelius' vision and why they had come. And slowly, Peter began to understand. God had just told him that nothing made by God is unclean, including people like Cornelius who weren't Jewish. So Peter invited the men into Simon's home. The next day, all of them, including some believers from Joppa, set out for Caesarea. When Peter arrived, Cornelius fell down at his feet as if to worship him. Stand up. I'm only a man myself. Then Peter entered the house. Okay, this was a huge deal. In fact, it might have been the first time Peter had ever been in the home of a non-Jewish person. Cornelius had invited all his relatives and friends to hear Peter. You know that it is against our law for a Jew to enter a Gentile home. But God has shown me that I should not say anyone is not pure and clean. So when you sent for me, I came without asking any questions. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius explained the entire story of his vision and finished. Now we are all here and God is here with us. We are ready to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. I now realize how true it is that God treats everyone the same. He accepts people from every nation. He accepts anyone who has respect for him and does what is right. Peter shared the story of Jesus and how God had promised that the whole world would be saved through Jesus. All the prophets tell about him. They say that all who believe in him have their sins forgiven through his name. While Peter was still speaking, God's Spirit came and filled everyone who was listening. They began to speak in new languages and praise God. This was God's way of making it extra clear that Jesus was for these non-Jewish people too. Surely no one can keep these people from being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. All of Cornelius' family and friends were baptized, and Peter stayed with them for several days, continuing to share the amazing story of Jesus. The end. It's like how Jesus told his disciples to share the good news with the whole world. They just hadn't quite understood yet that Jesus meant everyone. So, what's our part in the story? Well, just like Peter, we have certain ways that we have always seen the world and the people around us. And it's so easy to put these people into boxes. People who are different from us. People who annoy us. People we just don't understand. Yeah, what we're tempted to do is just ignore these people, right? Or, or judge them for not being more like us. But when you choose to follow Jesus, he gives you new vision. You realize that every single person is made in God's image and is incredibly valuable. And they deserve to hear about Jesus too. That's right. Jesus can help you look past categories and labels. So this week, pay attention to how you see people. When you talk with someone, remind yourself that this person you're talking to is made in God's image. Someone Jesus loves deeply. You can even tell them if you get the chance. 
Yeah, I think you got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. God can change the way you see others. Which is pretty incredible. Want to try again? In a weird way, I do. So? My taste buds are still considering, but much better. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. How was it? Terrible. You want a piece? Nah. No, 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 no,